Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, George. As y'all can see, I got my uh, Power Max 45 out here. And this morning I was going to work on a project and I couldn't find any consumables. As y'all can see, I got a brand new one now. It took about 30 minutes there. And I had one section of pipe, which I needed two. So then again, I lost 30 minutes round trip. I got me another pipe. So then, my air hose decided to quit on me so I had to pick up this little temporary one there's a the half inch one I use versus the three eighths I believe or something like that well anyways from there my uh everyday uh Hobart uh face shield decided to run out of batteries on me and um, I couldn't find it here at uh, tractor supply which is where I bought this so, I had to spend 35 bucks on this one. So, we'll see what happens and uh, hopefully the morning uh, goes a little bit better for me. Alright guys, well, I got my first cut here, which uh, I did off camera. And my second cut's going to be right here, which is at 25 inches. This is 2 and 7 inch pipe. It's all scrap pipe, but it's in real good condition. And, um, basically... I'm gonna get these little deals and they're gonna be about, about this distance it's gonna have a, a half inch plate here sticking out about two inches forward or maybe three inches half inch welded on this uh, quarter inch wall pipe or it's a little bit more than three sixteenths and a little bit less than a quarter inch so I'm not gonna get too technical but I'm just gonna round it off to half inch and quarter inch so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off and then let me get my uh, my saddle here. I'm gonna have a pipe down the center going up, which is an attached to my top link. And then I'm gonna have one coming out in this direction, going to the back end of the rake. Alright guys, well the next thing I did was um, I got a piece of angle iron and I laid it across this pipe to kind of give me the the center of the pipe. Now when I sit my uh, my saddle, I can kind of uh, use that line and use it as a reference to the center of this uh, hinge point and um, basically just put it as far back as I wanted to, marked it, got it ready to cut, and then I got a measurement from here to the other side of the pipe. I don't know if y'all can see, which is about right here. This is about three feet eight inches. The rake's gonna be about seven feet, so I only need about three and a half feet. about a quarter inch gap on this side and what I have to do is kind of bevel this right here on the inside part bevel it down a little bit or I could even notch that out a little bit and it should bring this a little bit closer and should make things uh, a lot stronger and uh, a lot better to weld on so I'm gonna go ahead and mark what I'm gonna cut what I'm gonna trim and we'll go from there Alright guys, well I was able to bring things a little bit up, a little bit closer. 
I just notched out this this top part and the bottom part. Um, as y'all can see, it's uh, pretty squared off on both edges, so the gap is uh, minimal on this side. Oops, and minimal on this side. I might have maybe about an eighth of an inch there, which will fill up nicely with a uh, 6011 since I'm on a on an AC on an AC uh, welder. Alright guys, well this is the last cut I'm going to be doing here on this uh, this part of the frame here, which is a uh, 5 inch in diameter, and this is basically what I'm going to use as a swivel. The 2 and 3 eighths pipe is going to slide inside, it's going to extend beyond this, the top part and the bottom part, and it's going to swivel back and forth. So I'm going to make the last cut here, and uh, I can start welding up something and take a break in the shade. And I do have a chop saw, but I prefer to use a Power Max 45 because it's awesome. Alright guys, well, everything is perfectly where I want it. I got my little magnets here, my center line. I got the same uh, measurement from this end to right here, and from right here to right here. So things are looking good. I'm going to use some uh, 6011 here. They're uh, 1 8. I believe these are uh, 4 knee. And then I got some uh, some Hobart here. These are 7018. And these are uh, AC and DC. So. You know, I'll run my, my root pass with that, and then I'll, I'll go over it with uh, some Hobart here. And um, this one is supposed to be one eighth rod, but uh, somebody switched the rods in there for me. And um, they're 3.30 seconds, so, yeah. So once again, I'm going to run the, the 225 here at 90 amps. And I'm going to give it a few tacks, and uh, we'll go from there. And that should be kind of kind of good there to remove my magnets already. All right, guys. Well, I did some uh, 611 AC here, and I went ahead and got my grinder and took off everything I didn't like. I got a little uh, little hole here I'm gonna have to take care of right now. And another one right there. And uh, those were some spots where I had the gap was a little bit wider and. Uh, I guess some of the flux stayed in there, so I gave it a weld at, uh, I believe, 90 amps. And I'm going to get some uh, 7018 right now and run at about 120. And I'm going to give it a, a good pass or two, and we'll see how it looks. All right, guys, well, the welds look a little bit nicer. Nicer welds don't mean it's stronger, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, grind this down a little bit more. Get, all, get rid of all that, uh, all that splatter there and give it another good pass and I'll flip it over and finish on the other side so I don't want to touch it still hot all right guys well I'm at the end of the this piece here and um, I couldn't get it level one-handed so what I ended up doing was putting a level on one side one side and then I made a small mark I don't know if you can see it right here on top and on the pipe and that was where 
I wanted this pipe to kind of sit. So on the bottom side here, I kind of opened up the gap a little bit, gave it a small weld, a small tack weld. That way I was able to move the pipe inward and position it where I wanted it. And uh, this small wooden rod right here is a, it's a 330 second rod and that's basically the gap that's gonna be uh, remaining. And as you can see, I'm level on this side and uh, I'm pretty much level on this side and then the rest of this mumbo jumbo is leveled so I'm gonna put a tack weld up here on top and one on the bottom and I'll put you know one on the bottom one on top and one on each side and then I'll weld it up all right guys it's taking longer than I expected but I got this welded up on this side I get about four uh I gave two. Uh, I gave it a root pass, another pass over it, and then I overlapped two welds. And uh, same thing on this side. And I still got to put a little, little uh, quarter inch piece of strap there to just hold it in pin. I wanted to make sure this fit in here. And uh, this this might be the pipe I use. I'm not too sure, but it's two and three eighths, and it's a three eighths uh, wall thickness versus a three sixteenths. But anyways, on the top part where my hand is, that's where the locking mechanism is going to go. And it's going to hold the blade in whatever angle I decide to use it in. And on the bottom is going to be uh, what welds on to the frame of my rake. Alright guys, well I got this piece here. As you can see my level, I got to move it to the left. And I got these two magnets holding it in place. The pipe is in the center um, with this joint and it's in the center with this joint here. Now the pipe is level in this direction but it has to move to the side so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to put a weld on this side or a tack weld once i have the tack weld there i'll go ahead and tap the pipe on this side and once it's right on the mark i'll verify the level on the other side make sure everything's plumb and then i'll give it another tack weld on this side and we'll go from there hey guys as y'all can see i have a tack weld here and i went ahead and put this uh small rod here to kind of hold my level here around right the dot and pretty much around right the dot here by using this other rod here so I'm gonna give it a quick tack on this side and then probably somewhere around here and I'll work myself around the pipe all right guys as y'all can see I got this brace right here and it extends about two-thirds of the way because here on the back I'm going to have that little locking mechanism that I was talking about somewhere here. So I didn't want to extend it that far. And now I'm debating if putting a brace from here to here or from here to here. 10 by 10 or 10 by let's say 30 inches or so. But uh, I'll go ahead and weld this in place and uh, drink a cup of water and I'll think about it. Alright guys I'm going to cut some, uh, some half inch steel here. And uh, let's see how it goes. Gotta make sure I don't want to cut my C channel. Alright guys, well, I got this section cut right now. And I'm going to get ready to cut these circles in here. And I'm using a 7 8 uh, hitch pin. And I have an orifice plate here with an opening of a 1 and a quarter. So when I use my plasma cutter and I use this as a guide on here, it usually leaves about a, an eighth of an inch or so on there. So I should end up with a, a one inch hole or so. But we're gonna go ahead and cut it and uh, see what happens.
Alright guys, well, I got the two plates here, they're already cooled down, and uh, I got them spaced properly here at uh, 2 inches and 7 eighths by using a bolt and 4 nuts. These two inward nuts are for the spacing, and the outer ones are to hold my plates in place. They don't move or anything like that, and uh, basically, they're going to be around my pipe like that, and I'm going to put a clamp, pop them in place, level them out, tack them, and weld them up. So I went ahead and used the four inch clamp here to hold it in place. And the measurements are about two inches. And what is it? And an eighth? Two inches and a quarter. Kind of hard to see from this angle. But anyways, the other uh, bolt is gonna be a little bit wider. So what will be left was about two inches clearance. And the quick hitch that I bought from Harbor Freight has about an inch and three quarters. So I'm just going to leave a little bit of a uh, space in there just in case I just to give a little bit I don't want to end up warping stuff but uh, pretty much lined up where I want it and I'm going to go ahead and tack it here on the top on this side the other side bottom and then I'm going to work myself on the inside and then uh, I'll take this bowl once um, I'm going to give a, a good pass on there. Alright guys, so can't see but gave it a pass all along the pipe and the half inch steel there and I'm going to do the, the other side and be back. Alright guys, well that's it and uh, this will be part one. Maybe tomorrow I'll finish putting the braces that go here on the bottom and um, the tines should be here on Monday. So that's pretty much it for this. I mean, I gotta do a lot of grinding and buffing, but uh, looks pretty cool like they're all rusted. All right, guys, well, like I said, um, I'll bring part two up in a few days and uh, see how it goes. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.